Hello. So we're into January, we're into 2021. There were a lot of people who were hoping to get out of 2020 as quickly as possible. But 2021 also has a lot of uncertainties and certainly a kind of rocky start. So there are a lot of people who are looking to anything they can to give them some indicators as to how to plan and prepare for this the rest of this year. Some people who maybe thought uh, astrology was a little woo-woo or just didn't really know much about it are starting to look at uh, astrology as a tool to at least help prepare and plan and engage with the world in a more positive way this year. And so uh, today we have some amazing guests that I'm super, super excited about um, on a personal level and on a professional level who are going to talk to us about uh, astrology and relationship building through astrology and how to build uh, a relationship-based um, business um, where the heart of it is really around building deeper connections uh, through astrology. So uh, this business is at a very, very early stage. And so we'll get to hear a little bit about the journey of the team in building this new experience so that we can all connect and form deeper relationships. So I will bring our guests on uh, just now and I'll let uh, each one of them uh, introduce themselves. But I think, you know, what I would like to do first is, is give you an idea of kind of where these people come from and, and where we're all going as a team. So Jamie, I think we should share Ricky's um, story. So look at this guy. I mean, talk about bad ass. This guy means business. <laughs> uh, this is Ricky Williams, uh, former uh, NFL star, and is here with us today because his journey is, is, I would say, even more powerful than that image conveys, which says a lot. And so... <laughs> Ricky, can you tell us a little bit about what you're up to now? And uh, and then um, uh, we'll have uh, Stephen and Ophi uh, introduce themselves. And then we'll kind of get into, you know, what astrology is and, and what it means. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's interesting you shared that picture. Uh, I was At the time I was playing in Miami and, and Sports Illustrated sent their best photographer because they wanted to do uh, an issue uh, really about the NFL, and and I was very fortunate that they chose my face, on, you know, from that afternoon to to show the world what the NFL was was all about. And it, it's also interesting that when most people think about astrology, you know, they tend not to think of uh, NFL football players. But right, <laughs> but, but, but here we are. And so, you know, what I'm doing, you know, 99% of what I'm doing on a daily basis has something to do with, with astrology, whether it's working on, on the app that we're building, Lila, or it's doing personal readings or my own, uh, for my own recreation, I really enjoy um, reading reading astrology, mainly Stephen's books. Um, <laughs> it, and so, it, you know, and it really speaks, it really speaks to, to, to what astrology can offer, you know? And for me, it's like, I, you know, I grew up as an African American in Southern California and I, and I could run really fast, right? And so, I, you know, the environment helped define who I was and I, and I attracted and I, and I was the best, you know, I won the Heisman Trophy winner. But, you know, I started to reflect on my life and realize there's actually something deeper brewing in, inside. And I looked everywhere to find something to, to help me speak to or, or get in touch with what was going on inside. And I couldn't find anything. And I didn't find anything until I found astrology. And, and it gave me a way to, to understand uh, the deeper parts of myself that I didn't see uh, acknowledged uh, by by the environment around me. And so I, I was, it was such a, I was at a time in my life when I found astrology that I was really looking for something. And so I, I really just soaked it up and, and it's become a passion to help share what I know with people to help them, you know, get a clearer sense of, of what's going on with themselves. And, uh, and you, uh, and when we introduce Stephen, I would love for you to tell the story of 
you stalking Steven. That's the way I'll characterize it. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it was, you know, um, you know, I won't get into too much astrology, but but I'm a Virgo rising, you know, I'm part of Virgo is really about learning. And, and we see that if we can find a teacher, someone who's been there before us, a mentor, the learning process is much easier. And so much so with astrology, it's such a vast subject. And so I was at a point in my life where I really was ready to take my study seriously. And I realized I need to find a teacher. And so I, I kind of racked my mind in, in my favorite books. I always came back to Stephen Forrest books. And so I went online and to see, you know, if I could find him. And I saw he was uh, he was presenting at an astrological conference uh, on my birthday. And so I, you know, as a gift to myself, I said, I'm going to, and again, I'm a football player going to this astrological conference where all these, you know, weirdos, sorry. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and so I was scared and scared to death, but I, I did it. And, and I sat in Steven's presentation and, and after he kind of walked to the back room and I like rushed over, you know, to get in line to say something to him. And I remember I asked him a question about an aspect between Mars and my ascendant. And, and you know, but the first thing he said to me as I as I approached him and again, I'm a big football player. He looked to me and he said, don't hurt me. You know, <laughs> and, 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 and I, I got a, such a chuckle out of it, you know, because the truth is when people meet me, that's what they're thinking. And for someone to actually put words to it was it was it lightened the mood and, and really was a great first meeting between us. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Stephen, for for people who aren't familiar with your incredible work, can you tell us a little bit about you and your work? I'd be, be happy to. Uh, before I do that, I do want to do my side of the story. Oh, yes. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> so easy to misunderstand it, but that like I, I was afraid of, of Ricky. Here's this big black football player. You know, actually, our eyes met and he was my friend. You know, I liked him right away. His son falls in my house of marriage. A little preview of Leela. It doesn't mean we'll get married, but there there was an instant simpatico between us. And I just totally got it that here's a guy with a big, deep spiritual heart and everybody looks at him and says, please don't hurt me. So I wanted to sort of mock that. And and I, I think it worked uh, because we <laughs> I, it took us about uh, nine tenths of a second to become good friends. <laughs> Fair enough, Ricky. Yeah, it was quick, very quick. Really quick. So yeah, um, my story. Uh, I'm 72, so I don't want to take up the whole show with my story. <laughs> I, I I was a product of my environment, just like Ricky was. So uh, born in 1949, I was a smart kid, not very athletic. So immediately I'm on the science track, and I got into amateur astronomy, built telescopes, you know, and that kind of thing. I'm like 12 years old, New York City, looking through the telescope on the roof of my apartment through the muck in the atmosphere. Um, and there was a sense of magic, not not just science, but the, the, the magic, the sense that I was looking at living things when I was looking at galaxies. And, and it's like, is the universe alive? Is it a great mind? Is it communicating with me somehow? And, and that totally unscientific attitude just wouldn't go away. It took root in me and it sort of fused with, with uh, astrology by the time I was in my late teens. I uh, was making my living as an astrologer by my middle 20s. I had a contract with uh, Bantam Books to write my first book, The Inner Sky, when I was in my early 30s. So I, it, it's uh, I, I've never uh, really had to worry about a career. Uh, I came to a turning point where, uh, the way I like to say it, this may be a little bit unfair to Justin Bieber, but you know, the, the sense of do I, do I want to be Carl Jung or do I want to be Justin Bieber? I had some opportunities to be kind of more popular, but I, I decided I wanted to, 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 to do the, the deep teaching of, of serious astrology. And so I began to self-publish because the mainstream publishers would not, uh, they weren't open to, to the kind of deeper material that I wanted to write. So, um, and the last thing I knew, I was in my early 30s, and now here I am, 72. I, I haven't had a breath since then. <laughs> you are one of the busiest men in astrology, for sure. Amen. Thank you for that, Stephen. And then, Ovi, I have to share our story just because I love it so much. <laughs> yes. Um, and then I'd like you to, to let people know more about you and, and Astro Twins. Well, 
So when working with, you know, Ricky and Steven and Matt and Fred and the team, you know, we were really excited about a potential, you know, partnership and bringing you into, you know, into the business. And, uh, and I had remembered that, and, and I follow your stuff at daily and you. Uh, weekly. And uh, I think I've bought every product that you've ever probably wow. bought on the market. Yes. Over, I don't know, years. And, uh, and I had remembered you guys saying at some point that you're, uh, uh, talking about your father and uh, being from Michigan. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. You know, so mm -hmm. another simpatico. I just felt like, you know, connected a bit. And then when we talked, then it turns out that you went to high school with my brother and sister in Michigan. And so mm -hmm. here are these astrologers that I love that I've been following religiously and you know based in new york and then i find out that he went to the high school with my brother and sister so i feel like we were meant to be family so meant to be and we're both sagittarians right i know i know yeah. i love it <laughs> yeah. yeah tell us a little bit Isn't about wild well, I'm Ophie Adute, one half of the Astro Twins. My twin is not feeling well today, so I'm going to, you know, holographically bring her in through me or whatever. Um, <laughs> I have been doing astrology for about 30 years. I did end up going the Justin Bieber route, but <laughs> I came from more of a Carl Jung background. Um, <laughs> at the University of Michigan, my sister and I started a magazine called Hughes, which was for women, women of all cultures and sizes and, you know, identities. And this was in the early 90s. It was a bit ahead of its time. And we found that the one unifying topic, we were dealing with identity politics, which as everybody knows nowadays can be very polarizing. But the one thing that everybody could come together on and feel joyful about was astrology. So that was sort of a background passion. I worked for Gloria Steinem when she organized some female investors to buy back Ms. Magazine. I was their youngest editor in, I guess, 1999. I love that. I didn't know yeah. that. Sorry. Wow. But I would creep into the copy editing room and chat with the ladies there. And I saved one of their relationships. She was about to, she was a cancer, about to break up with her Leo boyfriend that night. I, I ended up intervening cosmically and they're still married to this day with three oh. kids. So <laughs> she ended up um, giving us our first column at Teen People magazine. That's why it was it was actually Britney Spears. Justin Bieber was probably a twinkle in his father's YouTube eye. So <laughs> but like Steven, we haven't really stopped. Um we now write for L magazine for 11 years. We've written multiple books. We've got our we also self-publish our a yearly guide. So and yeah, I just Stephen on Stephen and I both have Jupiter at eleven degrees Capricorn. That only happens every twelve years, so you know. And you know, Ricky and I are opposite signs, so it's all astro family here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So, uh, um, I think you know you guys are all deeply rooted in astrology, and and you know I'm a huge follower, but by no means an expert. Um, I love the journey of learning that I'm on, and and all three of you are so helpful in my journey. And uh, but for for people who don't really know what astrology is, or maybe you know they think it's a little woo woo, or they're a bit cynical about it. What is astrology to you, and 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 what ways can it be helpful to people? I think Stephen should answer that. Yeah. How, how, would you define, how would you define strategy? Because as Ricky says, it's so vast and multi layered. So. Yeah. Well, I, I first thing I'd like to do is say what it isn't, just very simply, at least the way we do it. It's not fortune telling. We do not feel that that you're a marionette and the planets have you by your strings and uh, we can predict everything that you will do. Uh, that's a, a common notion about astrology. It puts a lot of people off and I don't blame them. If that's astrology, I don't want anything to do with it. It robs humanity of dignity, of free will, of, of the whole notion of personal responsibility. So that, that's a, that's a, a sermon I often make. Um, what astrology is positively, I, I, I go back to some notions that are literally prehistorical. The idea that, uh, 
uh, God or gods and goddesses or spirits that are invisible to the naked eye are interested in us and, and speak to us and guide us and inspire us, that there is a benign quality in the universe that wants to help us. This is a almost universal idea in, in, in uh, at least historic cultures. This had a few challenges in the last hundred years, you know, in this materialistic existentialist context that we're living in now. But the, the, the notion is that in astrology, we assume that the gods and the spirits and so on actually speak to us, offer us guidance, help and assistance through the motions of the planets, that, that astrology is the bridge language between the invisible benign realms that care about us and our, our confused uh, labyrinthine lives here on the earth. So we let the gods speak to us through the motions of the planets. That's it, as far as I'm concerned. It's a sacred art. Mm -hmm. That's I funny. love that. And uh, Ophi, does that kind of capture, you know, your thoughts around um, what astrology is? I knew he could say it a thousand times better yeah. than I did. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, yeah. I think it's, uh, it's the instruction manual that they say that human beings don't come with. Yeah. 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 yeah when, when I was a kid and my mom would, you know, would be upset with us, you know, and she'd make a mistake in her parenting. She would always remind us, you guys don't come with the instruction manuals. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, actually, actually we do. Um, and, and we talk about a chart, you know, and, and, you know, what, what Steven said, you know, to, to reiterate it, you know, this idea for me, it makes perfect sense. You know, as, as we're living our lives, um, you know, there's so many, especially now, there's so many things, so many chaotic things going on. Uh, and a lot of times we haven't been given the, the, the proper words or perspective to really understand. And, you know, one of the things, so it seems chaotic, but as we look up into the skies and have, and have astronomers and scientists have done for, for millennia, they've noticed that there, there is some harmony, right? There's some order, right? We can predict, we can predict where, the, where the planets are going to be at certain points in time. And, and to superimpose uh, the order that we notice in, 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 in the cosmos to the chaos that we experience on life, in our lives, it helps us find meaning in, in, in and dare I say, a sense of order, okay? So I'll, I'll use my, my first experience with astrology. Um, in, it, it reminds me of 2020. You know, as soon as COVID hit, I flash back to, to when I f first found astrology. And it was a time in my life where, you know, I'd invested my whole life in becoming the best football player I could be. And it started to dawn on me that maybe I'm here to do something else. And it was an extremely frightening thought because I invested everything I was into this, into this one dream. And as it started to melt away, I was utterly confused about what is going on. Okay. I had a sense, but utter confusion. And I met this, this Vietnamese woman who is a Swami and someone told her I was a football player and she was into astrology and she walks up to me and she says, where's your Mars? And I looked at her and I, and I was like, I don't really know what you're talking about. And she just said, come talk to me later. And so I gave her my birth information and she started talking to me about my chart. And it seems it might seem simple, but the simple insight, you know, she, she pointed out is that something in my chart pointed to the fact that I tended to attract stressful situations to myself. OK, and anyone who looked at my life, it was plainly obvious, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm a professional football player. So it's a stressful environment. But it had never occurred to me. It never occurred to me. And she and she pointed it out to me and something just clicked. And at that moment, I realized that, yes, the choices I have made, right, a lot of them unwittingly, but the choices I have made have created, you know, my life is a pile of shit. And I was in a position that I could do something about it. And, and as I started to really dive in into learning more about myself, mainly through astrology, I was empowered to, to the choices that I could make to, to make a difference. You know, and a, a simple astrological example. My chart says for me to be vibrant and for me to be myself, I need to travel. I need to experience so many different things. And so, you know, again, at this time in my life, I gave up this huge football career in order to travel and experience the world. So I felt affirmed. I felt seen. And, and the proof is in the pudding. You know, since that point in my life, I feel like I've 
truly come alive and I've truly lived. And in my experience is this is what astrology can, can offer us. I love that. I, I mean, that's incredibly profound. And I think, you know, you, t you mentioned at the beginning about, you know, well, there are these kind of instructional, you know, manuals and how your mom was like, you don't come with an instruction. And uh, I remember when uh, I was a teenager and, you know, having boy troubles with, you know, one of the boys I was dating as, as you know, almost always certainly happens at some stage. And she gave me, you know, she, you know, she talked to me uh, about it a bit and, uh, and she gave me Linda Goodman's, uh, is it love signs or sun signs? Both. Both. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, uh, and she said, well, maybe you should, you know, get to know a little bit about him through this other, you know, lens, through this other context. And uh, and it was fascinating because there was so much truth in there. And I thought, like, oh, my God, like some of the behaviors I was interpreting and filtering through, you know, my my own way of being and my my own you know values very differently than what they were intended. And so it really, in that particular situation, opened up my eyes to astrology, but, um, but also, you know, having almost an instructional guide, at least a, a framework that I could start to, you know, to relate to somebody uh, and be more open to, to things that I, you know, w wasn't necessarily interpreting in the way that they were intended. And yeah which made me kind of think, um, you know, a lot of people know about their sun signs, right? So, but astrology is so much more than that. So, so what can you guys share about, you know, sun signs versus, you know, all the other aspects? Got 10 hours? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was thinking when we were preparing for this, I was like, we're going to give people like such a small snippet. They're not even like going to get the full, but as long as there's enough to, tease people into learning more. I think it's great. I mean, I can speak to that briefly. I mean, I always knew I was a Sagittarius. I had a paper route. I'd read my horoscope in the paper. But um, when I was 21, my my college boyfriend got my chart done for me as a gift. I didn't even know what a chart was. And I found out I had four planets in Scorpio and Capricorn rising. And there's this whole other dimension of myself that was suddenly explained by this piece of paper. So I was like, I don't think, I mean, some people go looking for astrology, but for most of us, like you, Angel, it finds us in those moments, in those critical moments where like, oh my God, nothing makes sense. And astrology made sense of the things that didn't make sense for me, parts of myself, like you said, Ricky too. So you can't deny it. I think it's really good to be skeptical, but a skeptic and a cynic are two different things. A cynic dismisses things outright. Most people saying they're skeptical about astrology are just not giving it a chance. Be a skeptic, try it on, suspend judgment. If it doesn't work for you, great. There's plenty of people it does. I got no attachment. But, you know, if it does give you this other language and instruction manual to yourself, then great. Um, find out your moon sign, your rising sign. I mean, we have this primal triad uh, in the in our project. I don't know if one of you guys want to talk about that. Ricky or yeah, Steven. Ricky, you, should, you should share, or Ricky or Steven, you should share about the primal triad. Yeah, so, you know, um, in... So sun sign astrology, you know, I think even really serious astrologers, we, we have a lot, you know, we have a debt to pay because I don't think astrology would have survived to this day with as much uh, vibrancy as if it wasn't for sun sign astrology. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting because the way we understand ourselves, you know, we call it the primal triad generator and it's the sun, the moon, and what we call the rising sign or the ascendant. And these are, are really probably the three most profound symbols in astrology. And they represent probably the, the parts of ourselves that I would say are the most, most easily identifiable, okay? So I think of the sun and where the sun is placed, it really is like the sun in the solar system. We all, everything revolves around the sun and it's a source of vitality. And so in our charts, it, that's what it represents, you know? With the, with the sign, the values, right? Values that if we're true to those values, we will remain vibrant and alive. I, I mentioned my son is in Gemini. And so feeding my curiosity, taking in information, learning keeps keeps me 
keeps me happy, keeps me happy that I wake up in the morning. Okay. And, and so when I was as a young athlete, you know, people could identify, right. They would, they would say, you're very articulate for an athlete. Right. So they're, they're able to notice something about myself that shines some, some sort of intelligence. Okay. But they would also say, I don't understand. You're so, you seem so sensitive. You seem so sensitive for a football player. You're so soft spoken. Okay. Or even people would say, they say, wow, I'm so shocked. You're this big football player, but you, you know, you seem so humble and reserved and shy. Okay. And so the primal triad, my sun, okay, this, this Gemini energy shines, my moon. So the moon is our inner nature, right? The part of ourself that we tend to hide from showing people until, until we feel more comfortable and then it naturally comes out. And my moon is in cancer, which is probably is one of the most sensitive signs in, you know, and, and it's really about sensitivity of being aware of what's going on for other people and taking, taking, caring about what's going on for other people and caring that, doing what you can to help them feel better. And as a, you know, big black guy, you know, having, having this cancer moon, I got picked on as a kid, you know, and as I started to understand astrology more, I started to understand that part of myself. And then my rising sign and the rising sign is, is, you can think of it as the mask we wear, you know, as we're complex beings. And when we go out into the world, we have to put together a social identity that interacts with the world, you know? And, and so the rising sign can give us, can give us information about how to best do that. Right. And for my rising sign is, is Virgo. And, and Virgo has a lot to do with, um, I think of Virgo as the, as the craftsperson, you know, someone that takes pride in the details and takes pride in doing a, a really good job. And, and so as a football player, you know, I had a way to express that Virgo rising sign because every day, you know, I was charged to get better at becoming a football player. And I think what made me such a good football player, yeah, yeah I have, uh, you know, I'm fast and, I, and I'm strong and I, and I can do all of these things. But really, it was my attention to detail and I approached the game as a, you know, as a craft person would approach their craft, always watching film and looking to see what I can do better and, and, and better. And if I was only if I only had the sun sign information about myself, I would lose the yeah. I, would, I would lose this information. I would lose this these instructions on how to become more more of a, a holistic, more of a, a full three dimensional person. Yeah. And you know, there's eight other planets and a whole bunch of other things we could talk about. But but the even looking at ourselves as there's three separate parts of ourselves that are learning to work together can be so helpful for people and help them to see themselves and the people in their lives um, more three-dimensionally. You're so good at explaining that. Yes. I had a good teacher and, you know, and, and for, you know, for me, I, I feel like, like, my life. So I grew up in a very religious household, you know, and, and what we were told in church is, is you show people that you're a Christian by, by the way you live your life, by, by, by your actions, by your kindness. And I feel like with, with astrology, it's, it's really open, opened my mind so much and, and been such a guide for me in life that I feel really, to, that I feel like I live it. And that's, that's the expression of it. And in this project of Leela for me, it really, it's a lot of things, you know, and so Leela is, is the project that I'm working on with with Ofi, with Steven and the rest of our, our team. And it, it's taking this astrology and making it actionable, making it applicable. So I started studying astrology, you know, way back in 2004. I mentioned that that story and it was me, you know, with my computer and a bunch of books, you know, sitting in my library, just reading all of these things and watching my friends to see how it works. But it, it wasn't until I got into a relationship with someone who also was interested in astrology. And we took a class, my wife, Lene, and I took a class with Steven. And I'd been studying astrology for 15 years, but this was the first time that I really dove into uh, relationship astrology and understanding how to use astrology in relationships. And it completely blew my mind, you know, a, a couple of reasons. I think the first reason I, I talked about our world is being chaotic. And for me, I've experienced the most chaos in my life in intimate relationships, you know, and, <laughs> and, and it's something that, you know, in that his we, chart. it's in his chart. Yeah. <laughs> well said. And it's something that all of us are in, we're interacting with people in relationships, all of us on, on a daily basis. And so for me, my idea was, was, with this profound information that astrology offers us, um, relationships are the perfect um, field or, or, or playing ground to really to really interact with these with these things. 
And, and so to me, I wanted to, to merge these two things because on one level, it's definitely going to help people understand themselves and the people in their lives better. And with, with more consciousness, with more awareness, we're going to make better decisions. Okay. Um, but, but also astrology helps us understand ourselves and others and more profoundly it helps us understand the world around us. And, and, and so I think the big picture of this, if we do a good job with Leela, people are going to understand themselves. They're going to have better relationships, but also the world is going to make more sense to them. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think we all need that right now. And so Ricky, um, why don't you share with people a little bit more specifically about where you're at with Leela and, uh, and, and what it is, what is it going to offer people uh, along the lines of, making more sense of the world and relating, you know, better with, with other people. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'll go back to the, to the kind of uh, moment where this was all born. Uh, again, Linnea and my wife and I were taking a synastry relationship astrology class with, with Stephen. And what Stephen does in his class is the first three days he'll teach, he'll teach the philosophy and he'll teach the technique. And then on the last day, he draws a name out of the hat and he demonstrates the technique. So the story ends up on my birthday again, my 40th birthday. Um, it's the last day of the workshop. Stephen, you know, pulls a name out of my hat and it's my name. And so he spends the whole day um, demonstrating the technique of, of how to use astrology to help people in relationships on me and my and Linnea. And at the time I was about a year out of a marriage and uh, about a year into a new into a new relationship. And so I was at this prime moment in my life where I was reflecting on the past and looking at how can I take what I learned from my failed relationship and use it to build a, a relationship that felt better. And the information that Stephen delivered, it blew my mind, you know, and, it, and you know, Linnea and I were married a month later. This is, this is, <laughs> you know, it's, it's that powerful because. Testimonial you know, of the century. When you, when you go into this relationship of meeting someone, you know, there's these emotions that like, that pull you in there and you get entangled. And, you know, Stephen says this in his class, you know, getting out of a relationship, so much more difficult than getting, than getting in. And, and this, is, this is a touchy subject, but it, it's for, most adults, right? We've had the experience of the difficulties of relationship, and 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 the truth is, what astrology teaches us, we can learn. We can learn from life, but we take more bumps and bruises when we learn that way. This information can help us make can make better make us help us make better decisions. And so, with this insight, I just thought there's we have to find a way to get this information into people's hands because they they need it. And so we approached Stephen after the morning of that class, and we said, "Would you be willing to work with us on creating this this app?" And and he said, "Yes, thank goodness." And so really, the the foundation of you know my goal here, my vision here is to build the app as a extension of of Stephen's book, um, Skymates, his book on relationship, because you know the, the way that Stephen teaches. He, it's it's wonderful because it he he allows you to take these this vast subject and break it down into a way that you can actually use it. And so, for instance, um, in as he was reading my chart and, and Linnea's chart, the first thing he started with was each of us as an individual. Who is this person and who is this person? Right before we can think of two people together, we have to understand two individuals. And so, in our app, right. We call it the ultimate relationship app. And the first, our first step is self-discovery. Is before you can really get the most out of a relationship, you got to take care of the relationship with yourself first. And so we use astrological insights to help people understand themselves and more specifically their own relationship needs, right? Because the relationship that works for me is not necessarily going to be the relationship that works for someone else. Yeah. Right. And our, our next step, the next dimension of relationship that that we're helping people with is social discovery. And this is, um, it's, it's a social discovery feed. Well, it's, you'll have access to looking at other people's profiles. And this part is really creating a marketplace for people that are wanting to understand themselves and, and live a more conscious life for them to meet each other. And my favorite section of the app, and I think this is really what differentiates us, is that you know once you make a connection to someone or if you're already in a relationship, is, is the relationship building module. And this is where we use astrology to help people 
manage the things that show up in, in relationships. And there's so many tools that astrology offers to help people navigate through these three dimensions. And our task as a team is using, you know, what we know and our experiences to, to help translate astrological information into ways that people can take actionable steps to improve the quality of their relationships and the, the quality of their lives. And so, um, why don't you let people know where you're at with it? Can they get it now? Can they download it now? Can they sign up? Where where are things at? Yeah, so, so we're 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 getting close. We're getting we're getting very close. Um, we we were planning to launch in the app store this month, um, but we're going to do some more testing. Yes, exactly, Stephen. Um, the astrology of a business. So for be, before we segue, um, Stephen, on that question. So Ricky, people can go to Leela on Instagram and to the website. Right, yeah, right now where people can go to start um, connecting with us is the is the website and it's uh, heyleela.com. And and you're also going to be embarking on fundraising as well, right? So I yeah. think there are investors, then they can also reach out via uh, the website. Um, yes, there's a link for there's a link for investors, uh, even a link to check out our, our deck on the on the website. Great. And so Stephen, what are your thoughts about the like astrology of a business? Oh, well, uh, anything that comes into existence, in a sense, is born. And anything that is born has a chart. So uh, you, you can uh, you, you, you can set up a chart for uh, the, 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 the initial public offering, for example, of a publicly traded company. Usually that's uh, born in New York City at 9.30 a.m. on a Monday morning, for example. And, and so there are astrologers who've made quite a lot of money just looking at, uh, at, at businesses. And uh, here's a business that's here, – here, here's the holy grail. Here's a – one of these guys was drinking beer and – told me a little more than he probably should have, how he's made most of his money. You look for a business that's about to have a big Saturn time followed by a big Jupiter time, you know, by transits, the motions of the planets in the sky. The Saturn, it may not uh, destroy the business, but it's going to shrink it a little bit. There, maybe they have to invest in capital improvements or something. So the dividends are down. And, and so that's when you buy right in the peak of the Saturn stuff. And then Jupiter comes along and, and, you know, the business, uh, you know, goes through the roof and, and, and you sell it, of course, right at the top. Uh, I, so, uh, you know, businesses, uh, ideas, human beings, your, cat, your dog, your new car, you know, anything that is born, uh, not only dies, but also has a chart. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that. I'm going to have to factor that into, uh, into my investments and launch dates. <laughs> yeah. Good. And oh, you've got um, Astro Twins has something now catering to kind of astropreneurs, I think. Yeah. Well, that was a name we came up with because, yeah. you know, we know when people start to learn about themselves, some people find that an endlessly fascinating topic and other people are like, mm, OK, great. Now that I know how I'm wired, what do I do with this? How can I make an impact in the world? How can I do something that I love that fits who I am and my calling, which you can find in the chart. Um, and so we designed, and I guess we lost Ricky. I hope he comes back. I know. I hope <laughs> Ricky, we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll just, you know, we'll chat till he comes back. But um, yes, so we, uh, and, you know, over the years, I've been starting businesses and have learned how to not just be an astrologer, but a business owner. So I thought, why not use the tools of astrology to teach people um, how to, pick those dates, like Stephen said, or, you know, what is the best use of their talents? I read somewhere that the average person makes 38,000 decisions a day. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. And so we can get stuck in analysis paralysis and never move forward on our dreams. But astrology can get you unstuck. It can help. It's like a lovely decision making metric where you feel this little bit of confidence, like change your mindset or a focal point. Um, 
and it helps you move forward and stay in action. Like Ricky said, we like action driven, actionable astrology. So mm -hmm. I, I like to use it, I say, as a tool instead of a rule. And it's very practical, you know, it actually becomes a very, do you think so too, Stephen? Do you find oh, astrology is practical? Absolutely. That's yeah. a, a quick comment. This is more, more about the sun, uh, but um, I start off with a simple statement, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. You know, there are certain moral principles that we should all live by. Don't vote for a fascist, you know? I mean, <laughs> one size fits all. Uh, but then beyond that, there's a, a second tier of decisions, like um, should a person move to Ecuador? I mean, what a stupid question, because we don't know who we're talking about. And, and astrology helps us answer questions at that secondary level of, of values. It's a word Ricky used earlier. The sun is particularly connected to that. So when you're making your 38,000 decisions per day, what, what kind of overriding, overarching values will, will serve you best in the long run. So, you know, if, if you happen to be a Sagittarian, for example, you know, uh, when in doubt, roll the dice. You know? Right, right. <laughs> you know? Knowing if, that, yes. If you're a Cancer, you know, you're, you're, much of your work is inside of yourself and you don't need your life to be chaotic. You know, you, you need peace for your inner work. So, don't roll the dice, you know, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know, would be a, a value that would help. And these are simple illustrations, but they, they really emphasize how when we get past prediction and just describing people and let astrology counsel us, you know, how, how it becomes active. And I'd, I'd take it one step further, you know, in terms of Leela and, and relationships. Uh, so uh, how much, how much passion do you want in your relationship? You know, uh, you know, teenagers will say oh, a lot, you know, but we get <laughs> a little bit older, you know, and it's like passion. It's, it's not just about sex, you know, passion is about process and complexity and ripping each other to shreds and forgiving each other. And, and uh, if you're a Scorpio, you say, oh, <laughs> bring it on. I'm sorry. Say that again, Angel, I missed you. I was engaged to a Scorpio. Oh, so you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we all have one. In the we band. all been, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an intense one. Values of self-knowledge that allow you to make uh, better decisions about relationships. So you're not just going for beauty or glamour or money or something, but something that is more connected to who you are and what your journey is. And that's what Leela is all about. It just spells that out for you personally and, and gives you a, a, an understanding of the other person in, in, in the light of all that. One of my favorite promotional points for, for Leela is, is the idea that uh, you, you can learn in, in one session with Leela what it might take you three months or six months to learn in an actual relationship. So, you know, why not bypass all that learning and, and, and just, just get it right away? Is, is, is this a relationship you really want to pursue or, or would you be better off just uh, you, you take your path and I'll take mine and we'll look elsewhere, you know? I love that you said that because I think a lot of people we always say are doing the wrong thing with the right person or the right thing with the wrong person. Yeah. And <laughs> astrology and the way that it's designed in Leela, I came in later, but I just really loved what they were doing and I love their philosophy. So as a Sag, of course, I got on board. But um, yeah, when you know that, you can be with any sign. There is no right or wrong match. It's just what's right for you at this time in your life. So at least I think, yeah. So, mm -hmm. And uh, we're glad you're back with us, Ricky. Um, and so for 2021, what, um, what can you guys share about... Um, either specific signs or generally about relationships. And also we were just talking about business. So, you know, on the career front, what are some of the things that the different signs can uh, anticipate or hopefully look forward to? Mm -hmm. I can answer that unless anyone else wants to, but okay. Since I'm writing daily, weekly, monthly horoscopes and steeped in the transits all the time, not that you guys aren't, but. By the way, um, I tell you, Opie, you guys said something 
something for Sages the other day for yesterday. Um, and I can't remember exactly what the words were, but um, I knew that I had to be more aware when I was driving because I haven't been driving. Yeah, you're on as direct. Mm -hmm. yes. And so, and sure enough, like, you know, power of suggestion or just your prediction was right on, you know, this, it, I, I avoided a major accident and oh I, my God. Swear I was, yes, I swear I was extra vigilant because I had read that and I was like, okay, I gotta be wow. aware. So, so wow. thank you. For that. Oh my God. I'm so glad. Yeah. Wow. So what collisions can the other wow. side? Wait. <laughs> well, that is what happens sometimes when a planet has been retrograde. We're not going to get into the mechanics of that, but when it does its about face and corrects course, like it's almost like this whiplash, like when a subway or a bus stops and you're like, Row. you know, you go flying forward a little bit. So there are moments, um, you know, in addition to learning about how you tick and how you're wired, there are times uh, when, you know, our charts never change. You are this map, this sort of screenshot of the solar system at your time of birth. That's your chart. But then the planets are always moving and forming relationships to your chart and activating different energies and opportunities. Uh, and that's what astrology where it you know can help you map that out in 2020 if you base it on people's sun signs or zodiac signs most of us were really out of character we were all having to explore energies that were not natural for us the fire signs aries leo and sag um were very work driven and structured all i did was work last year uh the earth signs uh, were very who are very practical were free spirited and you know going all over the <laughs> all over the place trying all these big ideas the air signs who are kind of like to keep it casual went deep and got into their feelings and then the the water signs who are usually in their feelings were very social so that's a very top level not based on someone's individual chart but sometimes just the, the the top notes are true for us so we all learned about a new dimension of ourselves that didn't necessarily that hadn't been explored and i think in 2021 i feel that we'll be more back in character uh the fire signs are going to be more out there marketing ourselves or connecting spreading a message the earth signs back to their sort of structured ways the air signs more in their kind of social relationship building groove and the water signs will be home watching netflix and crying or something but you know <laughs> um that's kind of the bigger picture of it but i think it's uh hope that we don't just like 2020 was a you know shit show of a year if i might we all learned something new about ourselves and i feel like the astrology was that too so i hope we don't forget what we learned from 2020 even if we don't want to do it again anytime soon cosmically as, as well so that's how i see it i don't know if anyone else has an opinion they want to share but that's what i see as ahead yeah mm -hmm. what about um relationships and the different signs in 2021 because with the focus um with this whole team and people behind the scenes on um, Leela, you know what what are some of the things that people can look forward to in building relationships because right now i mean you know thank god Leela is coming out because it's really difficult to build new relationships when people are social distancing so yeah uh, i think coming around at a perfect time because you know, people need to be able to meet new people. And, and even if things open up in the next quarter, I think people are still hesitant, right, about going out and meeting new people and being very close in proximity. So like, I, I feel like one of the things that I've noticed with my own behavior is that it's kind of allowed me almost like in the night, like the 1900s when people would get to know each other over a longer period of time rather than the Tinder, like, let's have sex <laughs> you ever want to see each other again. Yeah. So with, uh, with Leela, what are some of the things that, that new ways that people will be able to relate in 2021 and not, you know, the specific functions of the app because those, you know, you'll share with the announcement with the launch um, coming up soon. But what are some of the things that the different clients can look forward to in 2021 and being in relationship? 
You know, so th this is an interesting question. Um, you know, p part of our task um, in getting this app out into the world and getting people using it is really changing people's ideas and opinions uh, and understanding, but mostly misunderstanding about what astrology is. And be behind anyone that, that has studied astrology and behind any all of us, we have a certain kind of philosophy um, that expresses itself th through astrology. And um, our philosophy with, with Leela is, is this is evolutionary astrology, which and what we're saying is that, you know, life happens for us. It doesn't happen to us. And so things that show up are showing up for a reason to help us grow and to help us evolve. OK. And so when, you know, and to me, I think of what's going on. Ovi talked about transits, what's going on with the planets right now and how they're affecting us. I think of that as the weather you know, kind of what's the astrological weather and what's it, what's it preparing us for? What's it, what's it attempting to teach us? Okay. And, and, and we have to put this in the real world, right? We've just gone through 2020 and what is, what effect has 2020 had on us? And, in, you know, the way I think about it generally is we have spent more time with the people that we're in relationship with and the opportunity, right. For us to get to know them and to get to know ourselves better. But also and part of that is the opportunity to realize, what am I doing in this relationship? You know, this is real. And so I think, you know, the 2020 has brought a lot of questions out for people in relationship. And whereas before 2020, most of us were so busy in life that we, you know, we weren't forced to look at these things into deep and to think more deeply. And so I think the timing of, of Lila coming out is people are ready to wrestle with these more complicated, difficult questions. And... And we're providing uh, a way for people to, to do that. And this astrology, you know, we kind of joke, and this isn't your grandmother's astrology. This is self-responsibility is, is at the core of, of what we're doing. So it's about not in a relationship looking at what is wrong with the other person. Why isn't this working? It's starting looking at myself. Are my needs being met? Does this person even have the ability to meet my relationship needs? And so what we're offering is an invitation for people to, to ask some of these these deeper questions, because as we can sink and in, and in, in form a deeper relationship with ourselves, that's going to manifest as deeper relationships with other people. And really, you know, the, the term you mentioned it, the term that that we used to use was courtship, right? Courtship, mm -hmm. you know, this this process of determining, you know, uh, is does this relationship have the potential to become something more serious? And 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 that's you know. Our, Lila is about all relationships and really all relationships have this courtship, whether someone is going to be a romantic relationship or they're going to be a mentor or they're going to be a friend. There's this beginning part where people come together and they're trying to figure out, is this going to work? And I think this is this is where Lila will shine was we're going to give people information to help them in that process. So they're making more sound decisions. Again, relationships much more easy to get into than they are to get out of helping people make more make more sound decisions as they enter a relationship. And I want to use an example. It's, it's close to home and it's, it's, but it's real, you know? So I mentioned a year out of a, out of a, of a relationship. And so, you know, my, uh, my first wife, Kristen was, was our first friends and family investor in, in Lila, which is interesting in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But, but, you know, part of, part of, because she was the first investor, I sent her some of the content we were, we were working on. Um, and, and she has her, the planet that, that gives you information about your ideal partners, about relationship in the sign of Capricorn. Okay. And so the, the advice usually is, that, you know, the people that are going to work best for you in relationships are people that are responsible, that are serious, that are disciplined, you know, and, you know, I was seven years younger than her and I was, I have zero Capricorn in my chart. And, and so this idea of, if we would have had this information beforehand, right, we would have approached things so much differently. Okay. And, and so, and, and, I mean, again, it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable, but it's, it's true. And if, if we can empower people to improve the quality of their current relationships, and we can also empower people to make more conscious decisions in new relationships, then I, then we're going to feel like we're doing our job. Yeah. For sure. And I think, you know, you mentioned something about, um, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, your expectations and, and whether or not you're going to be able to get something that you need in a relationship out of the other person. 
I remember one time it was, I was in Detroit in the winter time and I was having, you know, some frustrations in, in a relationship and, and, and then I got into a conversation with somebody about, Oh, this person owes me money and they haven't paid me. And I looked at the person, I said, I said, yeah, I said, look, we're both freezing out here. I said, if you, if you ask me for a glove or a mitten, I don't have one, so I can't give it to you. Yeah. And so, and, and I would if I had it, but I don't have it. And I said, it's the same thing. You know, he doesn't have the money, so he can't pay you back. So you either just have to suck it up, and, you know, and decide whether or not you want to continue that relationship or not. Yeah. And, uh, and then as those words were coming out of my mouth, I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> We all do this, right? We all expect these other people to show up in ways that maybe are just not who they are. And then you feel bad because you're not what you want. And that person feels bad because they can't give you what you want either, right? So you just described my first marriage. Want. Thank you. <laughs> you, just, you just described my first marriage. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, you know, you both want it to work, but, you know, so I think that self-awareness that you're talking about and that first phase of Leela about self-discovery, you know, the more you learn about what you want, then you can hopefully, you know, attract and relate to other people that that comes naturally to those well, types. You know, I, I think most important, most importantly, you can, uh, you can ask the right questions, right? If I have a sense of what's going to work for me in relationship, as I start getting to know someone, I know I have a sense of the questions that I can ask to, to get a sense of, can this person show up that way? Is it even fair to them to ask them to? Right. Yeah. Right. So I've got um, one last question for you guys. And I hate to wrap it up because I could talk to you guys for all day, every day, but we'll have to uh, do that over drinks, uh, over drinks on Zoom. But um, so the, the question is, uh, is the rose, the bud and the thorn we'll do rose and then thorn and bud so rose is like for you right now what is something you're really grateful for something you're really enjoying something that's going really well um that's your that's your rose and your thorn is anything that's challenging anything you're struggling with that's irritating um and uh and your bud is Something you're looking forward to, something you're, you know, excited about. Yeah, I'll so, go first. I'll go first. Okay, so I'll go first, and I'll keep it in the astrological framework. So again, right. I'm a, I'm a Gemini, and so the, the, the rose really has been um, so much activity going on in my life right now. There's so, many, there's so many things, and I'm constantly stimulated with, with new information and new, new challenges, and that's great. Um, the thorn is the kind of the, the dark side of that is I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed, you know, like I kind of have to organize things a little bit better to make sure that I can stay, stay as a uh, efficient and as, as effective. And because of my, my bud, and that's this, this Lila project we're working on is, is really exciting for me. And, and I think this conversation is indicative of it is coming from my background as a football player and understanding the importance of a team, but always kind of feeling like an outsider is I feel like the team that we're putting together here is, is an all pro, is an all pro all star team, and I, and I just feel seen and heard, and so appreciative of every everyone's con, uh, contribution. That this is really exciting. I agree, and thank you for allowing us to be a part of it. Yeah. And what about you, Stephen? Well, let's see. The uh, the the rose for sure is uh, that I I have. All my life, my focus has been on achieving a kind of excellence in the, in the counseling craft of astrology and working with serious students. I, I've not really been particularly driven by fame. It's really been the work and uh, happy to be a cult figure, you know. But uh, it, the rose is, is uh, suddenly seeing uh, this powerful team of people come together, this Leela team who really get what I'm doing and know how to bridge it to the larger world. It's, it's just a, an incredible gift as I, I, I come into the later years of, of my life. Uh, I was laughing when Ricky said his rose was, you know, I have a lot happening and it's, I'm really busy. And I was thinking, well, that's my thorn, you know? <laughs> 
I, I'm grossly yeah. overextended. I'm the Forest Center for Evolutionary Astrology, a very serious online school. I've got a, another team kind of thing going on, building that. So I'm, I'm sort of doing two team things. Um, the, uh, there's, there's an element of thorn as well in that all my life, I, the, I've, I've been teaching and writing, but but basically the lion's share of my income and my work has been personal astrology, just working with clients, you know, every day, country doctor of astrology. And uh, uh, I'm having to cut that back and, and to make time for these other things that feel more pressingly important now. So that's a bit of a thorn. I'm, I'm disappointing people I've worked with for decades and, and I just have to do it. And it sucks. It, it, hurts. I feel like I'm failing people and, and yet I don't see a way around it. Um, the, the bud, well, the bud is, uh, I, I anticipate Leela becoming a very big success. And, and uh, so I, I hope for a few dollars in that bud, you know, which obviously would free me up. There's, there's a bud. I'd be honest not to say that, but also the idea that, that this kind of intelligent, choice-centered astrology is going to be able to reach out to a, a much larger audience than it ever had before. There, there's a but. It hasn't happened yet, but I, I, I think it will happen. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. Well, one more tiny thing in the bud. My, my hope that uh, among the millions of people probably who are impacted by Leela, there will be a few of them who decide they want to really pursue astrology seriously you know, and, and learn to serve their communities in this most excellent and helpful way. And so that's that's in my bud too. Well, Ms. Downs from Michigan, who's also a follower of OP, uh, says Stephen might be preparing for his Bieber moment with uh, Leela. <laughs> <laughs> we have nothing to do about it. We will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Marley says, hi, Dad, by the way. <laughs> Oh, Marley. I like Marley. Marley, I'm not yeah, Marley Marley's taking class with, with Steven. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. And uh, we've got another Michigander, Mike Jabara, here. Oh, um, yes. And um, so, Ophi, what about what about yours? Thanks for joining us, Mike. Okay, well, I'd say oh, my I Virgo, by the way. Yeah, right? so, yeah. So I learned a lot about Virgos through my son and through Mr. Jabara. <laughs> okay, I love the Virgos. Um, so my rose is that since I've been doing astrology now for a couple decades, that I have been able to turn it into a business to the point where I can now help other people who are who want to do either astrology or something healing or wellness, like actually create sustainable businesses where they don't have to side hustle forever and struggle. I mean, can't tell you how many websites I built on the side on this path and all the other odd jobs. So I just feel so grateful that I can uh, intersect the two things I love, entrepreneurship and astrology, and help people live their dreams and make money from them. Uh, the thorn for me as a social sag is just not getting to actually hang out with people in person, missing that oxytocin hit of bonding and going to karaoke booths and dinners and talking about astrology, of course, uh, <laughs> while we do it. Um, and then the bud, I'd say that Leela is definitely one of the buds. When I told Gloria Steinem I was leaving feminism to be a professional astrologer, she was very gracious about it, as she always was. But she said to me, she's like, the one thing about astrology is that it's so genderized. I wish it wasn't so genderized. It's just in those, the back of these women's magazines. So, you know, I just love that here I'm working with a diverse, you know, just like it's astrology for everyone. And the team of Leela shows that. Like I do have a lot of women in my audience, but working with two men and just, it's so fun. And it shows the world astrology is not like the birdcage line or back of a, you know, women's magazine from the 1980s. But <laughs> well, anyone who looks like at, at, at the like charts, right? Like, I feel like you've got to be a mathematician, an astrophysicist, where you know Stephen started off to really understand that stuff. So, 
you know, it's it's very sophisticated science behind it and astronomy. It's it's incredible. Yeah. In addition to the spiritual and kind of energetic, you know, elements. So yeah, it's just such a great combination of our passions for changing people's lives and having them allowing them to have happy, healthy relationships using technology and this ancient timeless tool together. It's just super cool to me. So, yeah. Sure. And I think, you know, Gloria was on something there because it has been very genderized, but I think, you know, relationships are not in the sense that all human beings want to be in relationship. Right. And so yeah. this is just another you know, tool. And if Leela is another way to help people improve the quality of their relationships, whether they're work colleagues or romantic or friendships, then I think that that's, you know, that appeals to all of humanity, not just, uh, not just girls wanting to date. <laughs> yeah. And she is such an Aries. So I was kind of like, Gloria, let me do your chart. please. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get past this real fast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of hers. We'll, we'll have to get, we'll, we'll get her as a beta user. <laughs> exactly. She'd do it probably. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much for being generous with your time today, all of you. And I'm excited about um, embarking on this journey. And I think if people want to engage um, in the work uh, that Stephen offers or uh, Astro Twins, um, then, you know, please leave comments uh, in the circles and, uh, and, and Google away. Uh, and if you want to find out more about Leela, please go to the website. We've got it up here. Uh, and uh, we can also, you know, make introductions where necessary. Um, so uh, I hope everyone has an amazing uh, 2021. And I know that there's lots of good things in store for all signs. And hopefully this will be the year of community and relationship and Leela will help make that happen. So thank you all for participating today. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ciao for now. All right. Bye. Bye.